If you're not familiar, we are doing an interview with Paul Harrell. He is a legend within the gun YouTube community, and he has terminal cancer. We were going to do a collab with him about a year ago, but with everything that was going on with his health, we weren't able to. I'm very excited that we were able to do a interview with him. Nonetheless, so hope you guys will enjoy as we do an interview with the utterly just phenomenal Paul Harrell. Halt! Today on Grand Thumb, a wonderful treat. We have YouTube legend Paul Harrell here on the channel uh, to just talk, talk about life, talk about guns, and have a good time doing an interview. Um, this is something I've been looking forward to forever. Paul is somebody I've been watching forever, so I'm really excited. His meat targets are legendary, his shooting skills unquestionable. We hope you guys will enjoy as we have this interview with Paul Harrell. Now, talk is cheap, but Paul's time is very expensive. It's very cheap, even more so. <laughs> Paul, thank you so much. It's good to have Thanks. you on the channel. Thanks for that rather flowery lead in. Oh, we have to give you a little bit of something. For the first time ever, we have Paul Harrell in 10-bit 8K resolution. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna get to see what I really look like, <laughs> which is not anything super anyone handsome. wants to see. Super handsome. Well, Paul, this is just an interview just to sit down. Um, you know, I don't want to wax too hard in the beginning, but you've had such a profound impact on the community, on the gun community as a whole. How do you feel? You're about probably not to laugh at. You no, know, and I'm being serious. I can't tell you the amount of people that, uh, Micah, you can talk about this. Like, people walk up to me and Micah and be like, hey, we love Grantham, but we started with Paul Harrell. We still watch Paul Harrell every week. Like, you've had a, a, a profound impact. What's that been like for you? I guess the only thing I could say is I profoundly disagree with your assessment that I've had a profound impact. Uh, you know, I have a few people come up to me and they say, thanks for saving me some money because I didn't buy whatever thing I had exposed. It's not predictably good. But the whole thing is, if I can help a few people hit targets a little better or whatever, that makes my day. What got you into doing YouTube in the first place, Paul? Like, how did, how did you find yourself in this realm? Oh, long story made very short. Okay. I had this idea that we could do seminars, kind of like what we just did. Okay, yeah. Was, Back around 2010, really 2011, when everyone was getting all hyped up over 2012, and I could do some things where I could dispel the uh, myths that people had about global change and all that, and give them some good plans on prepping and that kind of thing. Total failure, absolute failure. But part of that was I made some YouTube videos to advertise that kind of thing, which everybody seemed to like. So off I went. You just kind of—it was just by happen chance. You kind of oh, just yeah. fell into it. I feel like the same thing happened to me. Funny enough, where I just kind of accidentally made videos and yeah. it just kind of took off. But where did where did all this knowledge come from of firearms, of ballistics, of of shooting techniques? How how did that come about? Uh, I've been around guns since I was a toddler. My dad's always had okay. guns. He is an extremely good teacher. And then I went into the Marine Corps, and then they sent me to a lot of training, like gun site and places like that, because sure. I was a marksmanship instructor at the Marine Corps Security Forces School. And so I had the opportunity to see a lot, learn a lot, read a few articles in magazines, and I try to do my research. I think that's very evident. <laughs> and so, yeah, it is what it is. And so you, you had all this knowledge kind of going into starting your YouTube channel, and you started it. Now, I, I don't know if you ran into the same problem. I know getting into kind of the YouTube sphere, there's always that pressure to keep producing content. So I think one thing that people have always really enjoyed about your content is you do what you like, you do what you know, and you yes. really just expand upon that. So what, what are some things that like really just kind of that you've loved doing when it comes video-wise for you? That I love. Yeah, like what, what are some topics that you've loved to doing videos on? That's a good question, and I really don't have a good answer for it. Um, uh, the videos I really like are the ones that answer a question that a lot of people asked, mm -hmm. and so I can get good information, but at the same time are fun. Like when we did the thing shooting while you're in bed. <laughs> okay, somebody asked me, hey, what would happen if you shot through certain blankets and immediately that popped into my mind, oh, I'll take the bed out to the range. 
that's like the funnest video. That, there's there have been probably more memes from that video <laughs> than I've seen of any video ever made. Where, where did you come up with the meat targets? If if everybody doesn't know, uh, Paul when he does his ballistic testing with rounds, uh, he uses meat targets because obviously meat is tissue. It's actual muscle fiber. It's a really good medium to show what a round is going to do. How did you come up with this? I just. I'd love to tell you something flowery, but I really just pulled it out of the air. It was dealing with a lot of people having this debate over whether or not a shotgun loaded with birdshot would really do any damage to you at close range. So I said, what could I come up with that would more or less represent a torso? And I went down to the butcher and I got some beef hearts and I got some those those shrink wrap packages of hot dogs that I used to <laughs> simulate intestines and yeah. I just put it all together, shot it with a shotgun and said, yeah, there you go, guys. <laughs> people seem to like that. And people seem to, to uh, they seem to find it entertaining. Mm. And to a lot of people, meat and things like that is real yes. where ballistic gel isn't. No, ballistic gel is not a good approximation of tissue. It's just a medium that we use to represent. And it's consistent. Yeah, exactly. And I would tell you that Ballistic gel is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And the, what I really think is the thing is, if one guy's over here shooting soda jugs and somebody else is shooting bricks and somebody else shooting ballistic gel and somebody else shooting a meat target, then the audience gets to see all of this stuff and they have more information from which they can make up their own mind. Now, you, you've done a lot of videos at this point. Your, 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 your catalog of videos is massive. Out of all those that you've done, You've done a lot of ballistic testing, a lot of dispelling of myths. Was there anyone in particular that you were like, holy shit, that is not what I expected? Yes. Okay, I'm I can't ready. remember which one off the top of my mm -hmm. head, but I've had a few where, wow, the result we got was not what I thought we'd get. Anything that at all jumps out to you over oh, the years? If you years. gave me a few minutes, I'd think of something. You can, we, you we can, can take come back your, You that. can take your time for sure. Um, <clears throat> another thing to think about is going to be... Yeah. Now, Paul, I know you do own a lot of firearms as well, obviously. You're, you, you somewhat like firearms. I guess we could say that. <laughs> we okay. could say you like firearms. Do you, uh, a couple questions I have there is, like, I, I've always taken you to be very staunch for the Second Amendment, to be all about, you know, personal arm protection, being able to protect yourself and your family. Like, it's got to feel good, to some extent, to have had that good impact on the community. Well, again, I don't know that... You seem to think my impact has been a lot more than I think. Dude, my audience is going to hop in. They're just going to they're just gonna make you feel great. You, you know what? Occasionally, them. people say that they went out and bought whatever gun. And that they'd never heard of me until they then looked up a YouTube video mm -hmm. trying to learn how to use their gun, saw mine, and then they were able to go from a certain level to improving their ability a lot more. And that is what really get, gets me, but... As far as Why? the Second Amendment community and mm. as a whole, okay, I don't want to ramble on, but please, for people in our position, we always represent the Second Amendment and gun owners in general. And so I take it as a big part of our job, if we're going to do this, to represent all firearms owners in the best way we can. That's why you see me trying to, to uh, use PG-rated language. Sure. And, and trying to, I mean, although we do some things obviously just for fun, <laughs> trying to keep it serious and safe and all sure. that. Because yeah. if, oh, there's been people that you see them where they're just waving guns around and they're shooting blanks, but a lot of people don't know it, doing crazy stuff. You don't want Diane Feinstein showing that as representative of gun owners in general. You want them showing this. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not here. <laughs> uh, Kentucky Patriot was here today. Mm -hmm. He's the kind of guy who sits at his living room couch or at his dining room table and talks to the audience. And that is like he's a regular guy like everybody else. Sure. And that's what we need. I agree. I oh, that sounded politically correct, didn't it? That sounded super politically <laughs> <laughs> That sounded super politically correct. Well, now, what comes along with all that, Paul, is, is you, you've... You're not going to agree with me, but I'm going to say you've had a really good effect on young men and, and people who've been able to watch media growing up seeing a good example of gun safety. Hell, Paul, I learned something from you when I was in the military. I was watching you shoot one day, and you are talking about staying visually aware as you were reloading. That's something that at times I've kind of gotten bad at where I'm like, focus on the reload. So I was, I was watching you when you're shooting and you're keeping your eyes up, and I was like, Fuck, Paul's my bad language. I was like, dang, I need to get better because I saw you doing that. So it's like those small things have big impacts on people. 
difference. Make all the difference. Not just if you're talking about in the hypothetical of, of self-defense or anything like that, but in the real of going deer hunting. Mm -hmm. You see somebody goofing around while the deer walks by and he doesn't see it. <laughs> you, you, these are all things, the habits you got to get into to be successful. I fully agree with you. Now, you've done a lot of this. You've had hands-on time with a lot of firearms. So we have to ask you a tough question, probably the toughest question that you've ever been asked in your entire life, which is top rifle, top shotgun, top pistol. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not, not like we're going to have any controversy with that. Okay, I'll do my best. Okay. Just your favorites. That's what they want to know. Yeah, my favorites. Top rifle, there's two. Ruger 1022 and M16A1. <laughs> I love it. That's actually that's actually pretty good. I think everybody here grew up on the ten twenty two. What a great rifle. Top pistol? Top pistol. Okay. Where well, we picked a twenty two. My my top gun for turkey hunting is my Beretta ninety two FS. You hunt turkeys with a 92 FS? I wouldn't FS? say hunt it, but I bag several with it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really good because the full metal jacket ammo kills the turkey very effectively, but doesn't chew up any meat. Uh, another It's like hitting it's like hitting a human with a cannonball. Yeah. <laughs> Another uh, of my favorite handguns, my Ruger Old Army Cap and Ball Revolver. Oh, those are nice. And I gotta tell you one thing I can't, is the Beretta M922 mm -hmm. looks like and operates exactly like the oh, nice. M9, but it's a 22. Nice. Greatest training aid ever. <laughs> those would be my top pistols. Okay, you got a shotgun. Top shotgun. Everyone's my Rossi Coach gun. And <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. Mossberg 500. Yep. Top shotgun. Yeah, that's going to cover it. That, that gets it. And then Top Gear Pro, what we got right here, right? Oh, yeah. Now, did, did you have these when you did you No, start? no. Yeah. By the time I got in, we were using earmuffs, and then we yeah. got uh, issued pelters and everything. Yeah. So, But we did qualify uh, with an M16A2 on iron sights. Yeah. So we did still do that, but it, it was Air Force qual, so okay. that wasn't... Later on, we did, you know, the aspect yeah. war qual, and that was better. But, but see this, I always have it with me. Yeah, I noticed and that. I, I wear them. I wear lugs when I drive sometimes, and and this one I can always count on. I have them. I, I don't forget them. How long and, do you have them? And it shows the audience. Yes, I have earring protection. <laughs> How long have you had those for? Oh, I got them while I was in the army, so I've probably had <laughs> this right here for twenty plus years. How long do you have the jacket? Is a question. Oh, this is new. Uh, <laughs> this does not look new. I like how what well, define new. When I got this jacket, it was in new condition. It's just since I wear it all the time. It's kind of worn out. Uh, no, this jacket might be 50 years old, but it sat in somebody's closet for 40 years. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha. Do you have a lot of these jackets? I've always yes. Wondered. Do you really have like a, is it like, you know, like a cartoon character? They open yes. Up? It's like all the same jacket going forward. Yes. I have to order them online from eBay, so sometimes I get them and they don't fit. Sometimes they don't have the features that I want. Sometimes people give them to me. Sometimes I have different ones for different, yeah, so I... <laughs> I've sold a few of them recently because I'm oh, yeah, not course. doing the filming anymore. But mm -hmm. up until just recently, I had at least a dozen of these. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're depending on what you're doing. Yeah. I have to tell you, if you get a coat like this, you wonder how you ever lived without it. I'm, I'm going to try them. I'm going to have pockets. to try one. I'm going to get one for Micah too. The uh, the game bag on the inside. I didn't hear they had that. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's back here. See, you shoot whatever, and you just stuff him in the bag. There you go. These are things we've lost because that's why we talked to Paul. See, they have the shot shell loops in the pocket. Okay, it's very handy. But actually. there's a version that has shot shell loops up here with just a flap over them so you can get to them quicker. It's handy. Yeah. It's handy. It's easy. Now, we, <laughs> you've been doing videos for so long, Paul. The, I guess the question is like, are there any favorites or are there any ones that stick out to you that you'd like to mention? To videos that I'd like to mention. Yeah, so you've done you've done a lot of videos. Are there any that you're like, ooh, that was a good one. You guys should 100% check that out. And this is why. Shooting from a car is one of my favorites. Interesting. Can you tell me more about that one? It's done from the guise of if you're walking down the street, someone's going to do a drive-by on you. This is what you should look out for. Okay, truth be told, it was just an excuse to show off my car. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Shooting from the car, not the bed, not the one where you're popping out of the bed shooting. Oh, that's a fun one too. Uh, you know, seriously though, one of the things I like to do is put out decent information, and so videos that are really kind of boring but put out good information, like my introduction to shotguns. That's a good one. Is a, a good really is good information for people really who are new to shotguns. Um, one of the videos that I really like is any of our Thanksgiving specials. Good. Where a lot of work to me. Yeah. But 
it's a lot of fun to do, and the audience seems to really like them. Uh, people so, love them. They post about them every Thanksgiving. People yes. like, I'm ready for the Paul Harrell Thanksgiving special. And this last Thanksgiving was shortly after I broke my pelvis. Mm-hmm. So I, oh, man, it took some work. But yeah. it was, I, I was thanking God every day that I got it done. You made it work, though. It was tough, but we did it. There, yeah. The like, oh, that's one. Trying to test the, the question, which is a good 32 ACP hollow point? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the answer is none. I couldn't <laughs> find any that worked worth a damn. These all sucked. Yeah, I mean, they're just shooting the meat target. Don't get any expansion at all out of anything. What about the 25 auto? I have a baby browning that I'm really attached to. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because they're, they're just cool uh, looking. For the baby browning, I typically use... The XT piece? Critical defense. Oh, the critical defense, yeah. Yeah, with the uh, FTX projectile. You know, we, we keep trying to shoot that at 200 just for shits and giggles. <laughs> it's, it's, it's supremely inaccurate, but it's oh, a fun. you know, one that surprised the shit out of me hmm. was bird shot out of your shotgun at 50 and 100 yards. Really? I was just, I knew that it, at a distance you'd obviously lose effectiveness. Sure. But I shot the meat target at 50 yards and pellets didn't even penetrate. Interesting. They made dents in it and it would have stung, but it would have made no meaningful wound. How interesting. And I was really surprised with that. And I was using some pretty powerful 12 gauge ammo. Using like Magnum? Uh, like, it was two and three quarter inch, okay. but. Two and three quarter inch typically has three and three quarter grams. This sure. was four grams. Oh, God. Oh, I mean, it was, yeah. it was a potent It was load. stout. <laughs> and at 50 yards, wasn't penetrating the meat target at all. And I, huh. I was really surprised by that. Well, probably change, save some people's lives so they didn't load their uh, gun with, you know, bird shot trying to do home defense on the ranch or something like that. Yeah. It wouldn't have worked at all. For home defense, like 10 yards and less, bird shot is going to do a lot of damage. I have found that shotguns in general kind of surprise me because it's such a low pressure, slow round that it just, it's very unpredictable what it does. Like our our tests that we've done with shotguns, I've always been like, okay, interesting. Yeah. Noted. (laughs) Like, I did not expect and, that. And there's so much variation from one brand of ammo to the Well, you have, like, the federal flight control, which yeah. kind of became the standard. Mm-hmm. And But before that, it was like, oh, which wad is best? And, like, people really, I know you did, I know everyone did, spent a lot of time trying to find, like, a, yeah. a shotgun that could pattern past, like, 30. You know? Yeah, and there's not many that will. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, another thing that surprised me is those federal mini shells. Yeah. Those had a lot more power than I thought they would for close range home defense stuff. Yeah, that's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, one thing that really surprised me, my experience with 16 gauge is very limited. Okay. But I was able to get two shotguns, Winchester 97s with the same barrel length, 116 yeah. and 112 gauge. I love those shotguns. By the exact same brand of ammo, except for the fact that 16 gauge had a little less shot than the 12 gauge. Sure. It had the exact same velocity. Really? So there's no step down in power. And I got to say, that's one of those times when, wow, that really surprised me. At least with the brands of ammo I was testing. Interesting. That's not something I would have expected at all. I was no. always, like I was always like, oh, yeah, 16 gauge for a new shooter because, yeah, you know, it's... it's no, the guns are enough smaller and lighter than the 12 gauge. Yeah. But even though they, the gun is less powerful, sometimes your recoil is pretty close to the same. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. But from 12 gauge to 20 gauge is almost always a big step down oh, in yeah. power. Yeah. But from 12 to 16, depending on your ammo choices, mm-hmm. sometimes not a step down at all. Yeah. That's not at all what I expected. Again, not <laughs> at all what I expected. Uh, I did not expect that I couldn't find a single 32 ACP cartridge that had a good hollow point. Tested several types. Was that on meat or through clothing as well? Through the typical meat target. Oh, yeah. Four layers of t-shirt. Oh, meat. yeah. And we had several different types. I don't remember them now. I'd have to look up the video. But but none of the hollow points expanded hardly at all, which is a result similar to what I've gotten with 25 ACP. But you expect that from a little cartridge like yeah. 25. When you're paying a buck and a half a round for 32 ACP ammo that's supposed to be some big deal, I expected it to actually work. I thought the manufacturer might do some meaningful testing. <laughs> but not enough. But not enough, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the 40 and 10 mil was one that surprised me uh, when you mentioned that, remember? Yeah. So we talked about this in our 10 mil video, but you want to talk about where this originally kind of had the lid blown off it was on your videos. 
I was doing some stuff with 40 and 10, and some people were asking, what's the real difference in power? Well, let's go to the chronograph. And so I had two identical handguns, with the same barrel length and all that. One's 40, one's 10. Bought some ammo that was the same brand and type. And there was one, it was like one of the federal ammunitions. The difference between velocities of their 40 and their 10 millimeter was almost none. It was well within the variation of one round to the next. And so Federal was just kind of shortchanging you on their 10 millimeter. But it, on other brands, there's yeah, a lot it, of it, uh, On other brands, I'll actually load it to 10 millimeter, yeah. but not all of them. And that was a huge kind of scandal when that came yeah, out. I it, remember that. And, and real 10 millimeter ammo is powerful, but sometimes... It, you know, Has Federal ever talked to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could probably oh, cost him some money. Okay. You want me to tell you some... A company, I don't remember which one, contacted me and said they wanted to send me a gun. Okay. Now, this happens occasionally. Mm-hmm. And when they do, they never send me a gun. It's a, a scam. It's just a, a practical joke. But I always tell them, okay, we'll send it to such and such dealer. Well, be damned. They actually sent me a gun. Oh, okay. They send me. They told me they sent me an AR platform. All they sent me was the lower receiver. Like, okay, what do you want me to do with that? And the real thing is, in all the time I've been doing this, the only one time I've ever gotten a manufacturer actually sent me a real firearm test was that F.K. Bruno. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and we did a big test on that. But an F.K. Bruno, a cool gun, but outside the mainstream, so it's like not much I can use. Roy's been doing this for two weeks, and Garcon sends him that nice 1911 (laughs) 100-model 10-millimeter. Like, geez, guys. They just like his face more or something. I guess so. (laughs) The uh, you, but you, I wonder how much money you cost federal with that forty versus ten millimeter deal. Uh, probably none. <laughs> uh, probably something <laughs> at least cred, street cred, at the very least. There was somebody that contacted me that told me he was a representative of some ammo company. I don't remember which one, but it was one that ammo wasn't really very impressive. And he bad-mouthed all what we did, and it was so terrible and all that. And I invited him to send me more ammo and we'd retest it, but he never did, so... You're too scared? Yeah. Well, luckily, like a box of ammo isn't that cheap, so you can just wreck them. (laughs) (laughs) It's not too difficult. Uh, You know, Paul, I know you got a lot going on today, and so I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, Other than to thank you, and kind of finishing up here, um, I want to do two things. One, um, what information or what knowledge would you like to pass on um, as far as kind of summing up all these videos, and then I'd like to introduce Roy okay. um, and have him come in so we can talk about the future and everything and what that what that looks like. Okay. Then, yeah, yeah, he can tell you about the future. Yeah, for if sure. If I had to sum up everything, is that first and foremost, right about the time you think you know something, you're going to find out you don't know anything. I learn new stuff almost every week. The next thing I tell you is you got to look out for your Second Amendment rights, and no one's going to look out for them except you. You are an ambassador of the 2A community everywhere you go and every time you do anything. Every time someone reads your bumper sticker, think about the message that sends to people. And uh, and remember that you represent all of us. Okay, that right. I thought he sounded like that. No, that, that, that was good. That was good. Okay. Paul, thank you so much. You want to thank introduce you. Roy? Roy, come over here. Right, right come on George. You can see you're a super tall guy. We get another chair in here for you. What's going on? How you doing? We're doing good. Good. Thank you. Paul, this is this is on you, boss. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me think of something. <laughs> Super profound. It has to be amazing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. Hey, everyone. This is my brother, Roy. My current condition being what it is, I've handed off the making of videos to him. And so far, he's made a few, and he's coming right along. Obviously, the videos are going to be a little different, but I think they'll still be pretty good. His experience with firearms is, in some cases, similar to mine, in some cases, very different. And so, I think he will do a great job of it. Okay. Ha, it's it's awesome. it. we've, been, we've been talking. Uh, we'll definitely have you come out to the range, for sure. We'll oh, yeah. introduce you, and we'll definitely want to be on. We're, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you guys. And we got Paul. He's got some stuff to get off to. But, gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. And, Roy, we're, we're expecting oh, to do way you. more things with you. You bet. Thanks, boss. Appreciate Thanks. you.